Brandon, with the late roster move last night, does that just illustrate how you guys feel like the pitching depth is, is more important than, I guess, the luxury of having that extra outfielder? Yeah. Yeah, we need um, – well, especially after a doubleheader and um, some games in a row here going forward, we definitely need the, the extra arm. Next up, Rich Dubroff. Brandon, uh, if you look at Chan, if you look at Chance Cisco's stats, the the you know his batting average isn't great, two thirty, but his on base average is really good, three three eighty. What is your eye What is your eye test um, tell you about Cisco as a as an offensive player? Um, well, I, I think that Chance is, is only going to improve. I think he's improved a lot from last year, and I think that that's going to continue. Um, I like the swing mechanic changes that that he uh, started at the, this past off season. I think that that's going to continue. He's going to get more comfortable. I think you're going to see some more power in him drive the baseball. Um, but I think you know what makes Chance different than a lot of others is is his ability to to really not chase out of the strike zone. And we talked about a little bit about that last year when he first got there. Is got here was um, the ability to take a walk, the ability to get in hitters counts. Um, lay off borderline pitches, uh, not chase. And, and um, because of that tool that he has, you know, and as his swing continues to improve, uh, I think you're going to see uh, a guy that's going to always going to have a high on base and, and hit with a little bit more, hit with a little higher average. Next up, Nathan Ruiz. Brandon, I know you have a lot to keep up with with your own team, but do you, whether it's checking box scores or whatever, it may be keep up with Michael Givens. Miguel Castro, Richard Blyer in any way? Um, not in a few days, to be honest with you. I did see, um, before we played the Mets, I, I watched, I watched uh, Castro's uh, outings. And um, I, I saw, I've seen a couple highlights with, with Givens and, and Blyer, but I haven't, I haven't dove into it too much. Next, Dan Connolly. Hey, Brandon, with the designation of, of Mason and, and Dwight Smith before him and, and Anthony's injury, you're in a situation where your main three outfielders now are all guys who were in the system in the system before you got here, um, you know, in, in Mullins and, and Stewart and Mountcastle. Um, and then you got Hayes possibly, you know, on the precipice of, of joining them as well. What does that mean to you that, you know, I mean, I know the minor league system was kind of dragged on a little bit. Um, before you got here, but the fact that you're here two years into it and it, those guys are all homegrown and out there for you. That's huge. Yeah, absolutely huge. I, I think um, as we graduate players to the big leagues, uh, you know, I think you're starting to see, you know, we got guys behind there too, you know, Diaz and, and McKenna. And um, I think we're, we're excited about our, our outfield core. Um, you know, Santander, we lost, we lost for the season, but, he should be ready to go spring training next year. Um, I think that's just we have a really talented, talented group. Uh, you know, this year Trey would have been either in one of those spots or first base a lot, and obviously would have been in the lineup every day in the middle of the order. And and um, so I think we have a real talented group of of homegrown outfielders that. Uh, that we're excited about. Like I said the other day, I don't think you can ever have enough talent. <laughs> I don't think you can ever have. Um, those are always good problems to have to, to uh, you know, be thinking ahead and seeing what it, what it could look like. It might be crowded, but things se seem to always work out. And, um, but, yeah, I'm ex I, you know, the, the Stewart and Mullins not starting with us as, as being really everyday players to, to, to start this short season, um, the improvement they've made from last year, that's, it's, been, it's been incredible. And, and hats off to those guys for, for – uh, you know, really working at it and, and, and taking advantage of the opportunity to play, but, but also uh, they put a lot of work in to get to this point and, and uh, really happy to see them have success. Back to Rich Dubrow. Uh, Brandon, you're, because of the rain, rain out, you're going to need a, another starter on Tuesday. Would you possibly bring back Aiken because he only threw 39 pitches yesterday? No, we're not going to do that. I think, right. uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll expand. Um, yeah, I'll probably have, I'll probably be a spot starter day uh, just because 
I feel like uh, we want to take care of Keegan, and that's why I took him out with 39 pitches, you know, in, one, in the first inning. I didn't want him to go. That was further than I wanted him to go, to be honest with you, in one inning. Um, but I don't want to interrupt uh, his days in between starts. I think that he's, a, he's had a lot of interruptions this, this season already anyways, and I think the best thing to do for him is to keep him on um, a regular rest schedule. Next up, Jeff Arnold. Hey, Brandon, in terms of approach from the Yankees that you saw yesterday, how much different was it from the previous weekend? Because it looked like they were being a lot more aggressive than they were uh, when you saw them last week. Yeah, especially early in the game. So there's no doubt about it. Um, you know, they jumped on Cobb early, first and second inning. Uh, there was very, very few pitches thrown, and it was, I felt like it was 5 nothing already. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I – I think that they knew that Keegan was going to be around the plate just because, you know, it's not easy facing these guys second time in a week. And once they've, you know, they didn't know Keegan, they didn't know Dean. Um, and now these guys are facing them twice in a week. It's, it's, that's some tough hitters to, to navigate through. Um, but yeah, knowing Keegan from what they saw before, they knew that he was going to be around the strike zone. So they came out swinging about aggressive. We didn't help him out either though. Um, that, that, that damage in the first inning, that could have been limited to, to one or two runs, and then he stays in the game, and you know, who knows what happens after that. Maybe he goes six innings. Um, but, yeah, I just thought that the, the, they swung the bat a lot more aggressive early in the count uh, in both games.